Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a question and answer session. We're going to talk about modifying a Fender Blackface Champ. I got a message from my friend Rob. He's wanting to build an AA764 Champ, which is the Blackface Fender Champ style circuit, uh, the non reverb version. Uh, he wants to, I'm sorry, the non tremolo version. That's, I believe, what this should say. Uh, I believe there are uh, versions of the Champ that have tremolo versus ones that do not. So, um, what he wants to do is actually add a reverb control, add a mid range control, add a bright switch. And so, we're going to talk through some of those mods, maybe a couple others that I think might be kind of fun and worth considering. So, if you're interested in that, go ahead and stick around and let's dive in. Okay, this is the AA764 Fender Champ circuit. This is based on the blackface style one. So the main point of difference here, I mean, we still have a 5Y3 rectifier. We still have one single 6V6 output tube and a single 12AX7 with two gain stages. The really the only major difference is that we have um, a, a bit of a tone stack that is placed into the signal here. And so that, you know, obviously makes make some pretty good changes in terms of what the circuit can do and what uh, you can get out of it with, with the how you set up your tone. Uh, I really actually quite like having that tone stack in there myself personally. So uh, let's talk a little bit through some of the changes that he was looking for. Um, we'll start with the easy ones. So first the mids control and the bright switch, these will be very simple. So first with the mid range control, you want to look at this resistor right here. It's a 15k fixed resistor. Um, the resistor is going to be connected to the tone stack in one place and then grounded on the other place. I think this usually happens on the back of the bass control. What you're going to want to do is instead run this control uh, into a variable resistor. So if you think of your pot, you got one, two, three. And so like imagine that this is on the back of the amp. The, the part that you control is, is projecting forward through the other side. And then this is, you're looking at it on the bottom. You've got terminals one, two, and three. What you'd want to do is put this connection here to leg two and this connection here to ground and that'll give you variable resistance. I would recommend 25k for the pot and you might even want uh, a 25k honestly would be totally fine. I think you can get away with that. It might not be a bad idea to put a minimum resistor because otherwise if you put the pot on zero you have no resistance whatsoever and that's going to kind of mess up how the tone stack works. So it might be okay to uh, in here to add a resistor in line maybe of like like 5k something or 4.7 or 5k um, that could give you a little less resistance than the than the stock value or even the stock fender value but then obviously give you um, up to 25k which would be a little bit more than this so you get a nice sweep of mid-range control one other thing you can do here on the other side on the output this side this connection here that's going to ground you could put a switch so if you have the switch, it looks kind of like that, and it's I'm doing an, an SPDT single pole double throw switch will have three connections. So um, you could actually let's interrupt this. You could run this leg into the middle, and then this terminal on one side to the ground connection, and what that would do it would defeat the, this uh, this connection here to ground. So when it's connect, when a, a switch is like a teeter totter. So when it's when it's connected this way, the middle connects with this, connects ground to this to the mid control, and then the tone stack will work just fine. But when you go this way to the other side of the teeter totter, when you switch the switch this way, then it's going to defeat the access of the entire tone stack, which is feeding through here, through here, and through here to ultimately reach that ground connection. And if you um, if you remove that capability then you remove the tone stack entirely and are able to access more of that tweed uh, champ style tone. You're going to get a big increase in mid-range and a big increase in gain, which could be a nice, interesting, and different tone. And then if you if you have the switch, when the switch is on and the tone stack is involved, it's it's no worse. You're not, you're not getting a worse version. There's really no cost to it whatsoever. You're just giving yourself greater flexibility, if that's what you so wish. Then... Next, the bright control. So uh, you've got here, uh, you've got this volume control right here. And again, you've got a signal coming in, a signal going out the, the middle wiper, um, and then this other terminal goes to ground. So what you want to add is from this point, 
run out to a switch. Again, um, you you know, run into like a, a single pull double throw switch. Then on, we'll, we'll draw our switch right here like this. We'll so see you're going to the middle lug. Here's our knob. So you're going to the middle lug of the switch. Now again, on one side, you want no connection to be the default stock connection. And then the other side, you actually want to run a capacitor that will terminate on the other side of the volume control. And you want to experiment a little bit with this value. Um, usually I would recommend like a smaller value, maybe like 250 picofarads, but you could experiment with that a little bit. Um, what that's going to allow is, so when that audio signal comes out of the tone stack, it's going to get to here, going to go into the switch. If it can go this way, just those high treble frequencies can pass this capacitor. Whereas the rest of the signal is like, oh, I can't go through that cap. I'll go back this way. And they got to go through the resistance of the volume control. So uh, those are two ways that you could add a mid-range pot, a, a gain switch, or a, a raw switch is probably what I would call it, to bypass the tone stack entirely if you wanted, and then also the bright cap and put it on a switch as well. Um, so that would definitely add quite a bit of versatility to this amplifier. One other interesting note to think about would be the negative feedback right here. So that's coming here off of the speaker of the output right here, that connection of the output transformer going out to the speaker runs through here into this 2.7K uh, resistor, and that ties in here. And um, you could actually input a switch in here as well. So uh, you could interrupt your signal right here like this. You could um, go again right here. Imagine we've got our switch. And again, when you connect these two points of the sides of the switch, then the negative feedback resistor is in line. And then when you switch the switch this way and it connects this point to this point, then you take this path out and you're going to, again, get a little bit of a bump in gain, a little bit of a bump in mid-range, and a little bit less of a hi-fi and a little less, um, yeah, kind of a cleaner, clearer type tone, a little, little lower headroom. And so that combined with that mid-range tone stack switch will give you a ton of flexibility in terms of gain and headroom and mid-range content. And then you get all your potential tone shaping with the tone stack and the bright switch. That would really turn this amp into quite a versatile little uh, tube amp that would sound really good with a lot of different type settings and just be a lot of fun to play with. So next, um, let's talk about this, adding reverb. Uh, right here, this 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 request of adding reverb to this circuit. That's a great question. Now, um, most of the Fender tube amps of old, um, they actually use a tube and a half. So if we actually pull up a super reverb schematic, I believe that we're going to see that it there's a more. It's more than just one triode that gets used. All right, this is the schematic from the super reverb. Let's follow the signal right here. You can see coming out of the vibrato channel, we go into the gain stage, into the tone stack, volume control with bright switch. And you know, this would be good to look at for other questions. They've got 120 picofarads. Um, that's good to note. So you know, that, you know I, I said 250, maybe you wanna try 120 instead. The lower the value of the cap, it's only gonna allow more high frequencies to pass. So if you go 250 or even 500, it's gonna allow more like mid range. Whereas 120 is just highs, but back to the reverb. So then you go through this coupling cap, 0.02, then the dry signal comes right up on this path, and we run into these two components right here before we go into this extra gain stage. So what we have basically here is one, two, three, four triodes. So that's actually two tubes additional. And you could just copy this. Um, if you wanted to add two extra tubes to your circuit, you could absolutely just copy this whole uh, circuit that you see here, and that would work completely fine. Um, you know, you've got your mixing resistor 3.3 meg. That's going to stop the because um, you've got two outputs, right? You got one output here to go to the reverb, and you've got the other output here to go up, sending the dry signal forward. Well, you need to incentivize some of the signal to go into the reverb circuit because you know this this is going to there's some load that gets placed on it to drive through here, and it probably would just instead go this way. So this gives you some mixing capability. 
Then we've got these two gain stages here that are in parallel to give them a little extra push into the reverb transformer, into the reverb, uh, the, the spring reverb unit, into this gain stage. We've got a reverb control, and then this 470k along with this 220k helps, and then the value of this pod helps kind of help us decide how much of that reverb signal gets mixed back in on this end. Now, what I have been looking into is a one reverb circuit, and I stumbled across, across this thread. I'll try to leave a link to this in the description below for your reading. I would think of this as a starting point uh, and a very good one at that. You can see this provides a one tube reverb circuit. So um, it's a little bit simpler to install. You see you've got your in and out. So this is the insertion point where you want to uh, send the input of the signal comes in. Then you get this 100K mixing resistor, just like we saw here. That's this point right here. So your in is right on the other side of this coupling cap and your out is on the other side of this mixing resistor. They've got 3.3 meg, but in the one tube reverb, we've got 100K. So then the signal goes here to a dwell control, that's this one meg pot, into a gain stage, into the reverb transformer, reverb tank, then you've got a little bit of resistance and capacitance here. This 500 picofarads will dull the reverb signal by sending some of those high frequencies to ground. You could cut that cap out for a brighter reverb or lessen it uh, for more of a higher mid-range tone. Then you've got a normal gain stage, coupling cap, and then your reverb control at 1 meg, 330k, and then into the out control. I have actually been experimenting with this recently, and I found that for my circuit, um, I what I did is I used a fix set of resistors here. So what, here's what I want to do, actually. I want to I'll copy this and let's let's actually put this image onto uh, here. Okay, I've got that reverb circuit imposed here. Um, let's first of all figure out where do we want to insert the reverb. Um, I think that I would probably tend to place it late in the preamp. So we need a point for RV1 and RV2. I'm thinking we look kind of in that area right there. Let's add another layer that we can write on. Like right in here is where I think I would want to put RV1 and RV2. So I'm going to just put a little line. So what that would look like, let's actually go to our schematic and let's erase this. Okay, so what we instead want is we'll go up here and we've got a resistor and then we'll come back for this point right here and right here. We've got R... V1, R, V2, and I believe this is 100K, maybe 150K. Yeah, I, I think the value that I tested 150 worked better, but you can play around with that. Um, so I'm going to go with 150. You guys can change that if you wish. Make that right there, 150K. Okay, so that's where I think it would work best. It would be good to have this after the coupling cap. Um, but before we get into the power tube, I think that would be perfect. Then we've got a, a potential for a dwell control here with this one meg pot. All these other values are completely fine. Reverb transformer, reverb tank. I would probably take that capacitor out and just leave it nice and bright, but I do like a little brighter reverb. And then I think I found that this pot needed to be three meg. And then I think I even bumped this down to like 150k but um so what with these this resistor this pot and this resistor that's going to kind of determine the balance um between how you know in some of this it needs to be variable because of where you place it in the circuit how strong the signal is that's driving into it and and just kind of a lot of other factors so just for my amp and the amp i was building these were the values that worked for me, but you might need to play around with them. What Basically, if you tinker with these three resistors, uh, you're going to change the mix between dry and wet signal. So um, the changes that I made boosted the amount of wet signal that was potentially available. But this would be a pretty good starting point, and you would maybe need to tweak some of these values as you experiment. But this could be a really fun one-tube reverb 
Um, so if I actually draw the entirety of the schematic here, let's uh, work on that and then we'll take a look here at the end. Okay, so this is kind of my final quote unquote schematic. Again, we've got this, instead of this mid control going through that resistor to ground, I've gone to the middle lug of a 25K pot, and then the third leg goes into a single pole double throw switch, which the other side of that is grounded uh, to give you the raw control and the mid-range control. Then we've added another single pole double throw switch to be a bright cap, 120 picofarads. Then we've intercepted the signal after this coupling cap, but before it goes into the power tube, added this 150K resistor, and then added this whole reverb circuit with some of these little changes. Uh, I think this schematic would be awesome and produce a really cool and fun, very versatile little amp. So let me know your guys' thoughts of this down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you and hope you guys enjoy building. Let's see, let's see you guys again soon. Thanks. Bye.